All right. Hey, we're here today with um, Neil Spencer, lead pastor of Coastline Calvary Chapel, and we also got Nathan Pooley with us from Upper Room. He's the lead pastor out there. And I'm just a moderator, just hanging in here today from Coastline Calvary Chapel. And I think what's unique about this group of three guys sitting here is that we've all been involved in planting churches, but also we're all local people from this area. I grew up here, Neil grew up here, Nathan grew up here, and we find ourselves all in the ministry and having planted churches Mm -hmm in this area. I planted this one here in um, Gulf Breeze in 1983, and Neil was a part of a church plant in Destin. What, what year was that, Neil? Well, my first year there was in 2010, and um, went through a time of transition from Gulf Breeze to Destin. We eventually moved to Destin in 2012, but started working with that small core group of eight people mm-hmm. in the month of January 2010, so wow. that dates me. Yeah, <laughs> and Nathan, you were kind of part of really a, a ministry out on the beach called the Upper Room that was really more of a sort of a hosting a dinner and a, a Bible study or films, and and a group of you guys used to have lots of people coming out there to just fellowship on a what's it, a Friday night or a Saturday night or Thursday, Thursday night. night, yeah, and then it kind of. Well, tell us a little bit about how that transitioned into a church, and then you becoming. Uh, a senior pastor there because at one time you were like a Pepsi guy, right? If I'm not, I was big time Pepsi <laughs> guy. Still, yeah. right. still am, yeah. Okay, but th- that's yeah. We it started kind of on accident. Like we we wanted to reach the guys on you know not everyone on the beach that maybe wouldn't go to a traditional church, and right. um, it was supposed to be just a six week like it was called On the Rocks. These oh, okay. surfers in South Africa shot these these little videos. Hmm. So we were going to do it for six weeks, and we got to the end of six weeks, and your brother, JV, mm. was like, hey, I really like the people coming. You know, he had the surf shop under us. He's right. like, you should keep going. <laughs> we'll keep the shop open. Yeah, and yeah. so we, we kept going, and that, was, and that was in 2012. Okay. Wow. And so we did that until 2017. Wow. Yeah. So we, five years. Five years. Six weeks to five giving years. Giving everything yeah. away, food every week. Yeah. That was the real highlight, I think. It was. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. It was, we had some great food yeah. and um, churches. Lots of churches helped us. Mm. Y'all yeah. were a huge support. Yeah, I support. think we even took food out there quite often. Yeah, mm. you provided worship a few times. Mm. Y'all, I think Pastor, you spoke a couple times. Okay, and, yeah. Um, it was really, it was fun. So, that, so there came a time though when, when that that season was coming to an end, and and the people were, maybe if I misspoke and let me know, but it seemed like. The people were like, oh, this is our church. And uh, they didn't go to church anywhere else, and they saw that venue as their church. And so it kind of just transitioned into a church. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, the people, you know, we would encourage folks to go to other churches on Sundays. It's like, Mm -hmm. this isn't enough. It was a Thursday night group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and then there was a core that started forming. And then the core started having kids. You know, Uh, we had a kid. And it was like, so let's add children's ministry on Thursday night. And then that really started building this this community. And that, and everyone was like, we, we, this is our church. And, Mm -hmm. And so we felt like the next step was to plant on, you know, move to Sundays. And, it was a big transition, you know, it mm. was. It was tough to stop the Thursday night deal because it was... Had a lot of momentum, probably. Had a lot of momentum, yeah, and it identity. was fun, and it yeah. was like, you know, and um, but we felt like it was, we needed to, to make kind of a hard move to, mm, to yeah. Sundays, and it was it was a good thing, I feel like, for mm. us. Well, I, I know that for Neil, when you went down to Destin, like you said, there was only like eight to ten people. They're meeting in a little storefront mm-hmm. that, that one of the people in the church owned mm-hmm. and let you guys use it for nothing and then you went down there and started uh, actually being the pastor there and how long would you say you were in that storefront till you literally outgrew it it was just too small yeah you know that's exactly what happened there were eight people that were living in Destin but at one time were a part of a fellowship in Fort Walton Beach right. but maybe even kind of like what was going on on Pensacola Beach wanted a community to, to be able to live where they lived in fellowship mm-hmm. and connection so uh, they had contacted us here in Gulf Breeze and right. uh, didn't really have a pastor or any kind of leadership. 
So they literally just took a storefront that was owned by one of the guys in that original group, set up a screen. Right. We, we sent them some chairs and audio equipment and stuff, but they just began live streaming yeah. this services, mm -hmm. you know, these services here from Gulf Breeze on their own. Hmm. And uh, they did that for about a year and it never really gained a lot of traction, I think maybe without some leadership. And so, um, Back in 2009, I was serving as a youth pastor, and my mentality has always been to try and raise up, empower, delegate, and just you know see how can I work myself not out of a position, but raise up others into a position, and then the Lord will just keep moving. And so I had done that with the student ministry, and uh, we kind of checked on that group. Say, hey, how's it how's it going down there? And same same eight, you know, still there. So I thought, well. You know, I can come down with an acoustic guitar and just start spending time with you guys. They were still live streaming. But after a month or so, I felt like, you know, I, I'm not the best Bible teacher in the world, but we can walk through the Gospel of John together and I'll just lead a couple of songs and we'll start building community groups, you know, in the middle of the week. And so to answer your question, um, I'll never forget the date. It was January 10th, 2010, because it was one day after my eldest daughter's first birthday. Mm -hmm. That was my first Sunday, you know, mm -hmm. down there. But then by Easter, um, we transitioned kind of away from the video, and then yeah. um, I just began walking the congregation through the Gospel of John. And then by next Easter, we moved out of that building oh, wow. and we're into the permanent building that Coastline Destin is in presently. Okay. So it kind of went from about maybe eight to 80 people in those first six to eight months. And uh, the original space was very small. I think it sat, uh, you know, 30 people on a good day. So um, we were just using yeah. other parcels in that space for kids ministry or overflow or something. Um, and then found a, a location of about 6,000 square feet. And then years later, took another 5,000 square feet and just kind of added to it. But that first year definitely was a formative year for that church and that group. And um, it's interesting. I don't know what your guys' experience has been with this, but I know for you guys, like you moved locations. like, And that, that was part of our story. We were originally located in a little area called Miramar, and um, it's just a small spit of sand in that area. So the only feasible location for a church to grow was actually more in like old Destin. And so we moved the group from Miramar to Destin, and that did change our, our the dynamics of our church when we moved 10, 15 minutes you know, from where it originally was. But yeah, it was that first year that really the church kind of took root and then began to move locations and um, God just blessed it from there. So you guys, Nathan, you guys started off in a venue that was an actual upper room. Yes. So you named it upper room. It yeah. was the <laughs> kind of a, a, a old restaurant that was above the marina on Pensacola Beach. And you started off there because that's where you had your Thursday night meeting and then it turned into the church and how long were you there in that venue in that uh, upper room i mean you still have a presence there but that's not where you meet as a church no no we we were there from 2017 to the first couple weeks in march of 2020 oh wow okay. yep. what an we, interesting we, time. yeah yeah it was yeah we <laughs> so we had a early service at the marina and then we moved to the beach church mm -hmm. right down the the street about four miles, five miles, mm -hmm. yeah. and had three weeks like that, and then everything shut down. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Plug was pulled. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, now, how long would you say you guys were not meeting during the COVID scenario? Lord, it was, it felt like, I, I, it's hard to remember, but I know it was at least 10, 11 weeks, mm -hmm. okay. maybe more. Yeah. And yeah. it was just, it was actually kind of, kind of nice you know <laughs> getting up on sunday and like i'm gonna go fishing or you know did, you, I mean? did you do a video service did they recorded the video on thursday and okay. so it was like so three day weekend yeah <laughs> yeah that's funny couldn't meet with nobody you know so but, it, was yeah, like, it was pretty isolated yeah yeah it was, yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. not a bad place to be isolated you yeah. know <laughs> so that impact then for you guys to move location is it's almost like diffused because you did it right when covid hit so it's just yeah. Like pre and post COVID, basically for yeah. you guys, whole different experience. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when we came back, we were like, I don't know, forty percent of our in person right. numbers. So we didn't churches. need those spaces. Right. And, you know, we were the, the the beach church is a lot larger, mm -hmm. and so it was about half full. Yeah. When we came back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was common for everybody. You know. Yeah. Interesting mm -hmm. timing. So I think uh, probably uh, a truth for every church planner is 
you start here, but you don't stay there. I mean, I started in the school down the street. And they, they literally told me, you got two years. You can only meet here for two years. So I immediately started looking. You know, we found this piece of property here, not far from where we were. But so you, you had to transition. You obviously had to transition. And those are those are usually pretty radical things when you, you get – positive or negative I mean, for us it was very positive because wow we're out of the rental school setting up every morning and you know trying to get rooms that we can use to a, a permanent location it kind of gives people a sense of security and identity okay this is us now we got a piece of land or we got a building or whatever even if it is a rental situation it's still like well this is us you know it's not like uh we're in a we know we're in a temporary dwelling and and it does something i think for people's sense of okay they're going to stick around they're going to be there and and i think that uh, every church planner probably deals with that you know you start off unless you're you're a part of a a, a group that sends you out and buys you a building yeah. uh, you're usually transitioning after two or three years and that's where we are yeah yeah, yeah it's it's that it's still we're kind of still nomadic I and mean, we have a good you know we, we sublease that church but it's not ours and so right. it, it is there there's definitely you can feel that with people mm-hmm. and then even leaving the marina that oh, there were some folks that didn't like that they mm-hmm. really loved that space well it's quite a nice view up there it is yes. <laughs> i mean it's, it is a venue i mean now it's used it's as gorgeous. a you know venue you can rent yeah. beautiful yeah. overlooking the sabine and it's beautiful but yeah, yeah there's no secondary space parking lot floods like it's got right. opportunities right. That are, right. it's hard to park everyone and right but it's core it's a really yeah, sweet serene. spot yeah. yeah yeah it's cool so so planting a church uh pastoring a church and you know being the guy from the very beginning has its pluses and its minuses um neil what do you think some of the the, the pluses and minuses are of being a guy who actually you know, comes in with only eight or nine people and versus maybe say some guy who comes on to a church and it's all established has you know, has a congregation has a building. It, it's a, it's a whole different deal planting, but I think it has some, some definite, definite advantages to it. Sure. But there's also disadvantages. Sure. Talk, I mean, talk like a little bit about that. Well, again, just as, as it would have it, um, today I'm celebrating uh, my youngest daughter's one-year birthday. <laughs> um, but I would liken it to that. I mean, being a father of half a dozen children, um, there's a whole different dynamic to being a part of the experience of a child and being their dad or being their fun uncle or you know someone who's just a part of their life. <laughs> but when you're, when you're their dad... Um, you get to experience wins in a way that are ever more ever more personal, deeper, and meaningful yeah. because you take responsibility for that that yeah, life. Good illustration. And so what I would say as a dad, I tell my kids this all the time that you know anything that goes on in your life, it may not be my fault, but it is my responsibility. Mm. I'm your dad. And so as the as the one that God uses to plant a church or to pastor a church, um, the church should never be built around a single personality. However, at the beginning stages of a church plant, who the individual is, the person's own personal walk with the Lord, the Mm -hmm. culture, whatever it is, attention to detail, that will help form and fashion the culture of that church. And that's okay. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's that's how it starts. And so I think one of the beautiful things about having the opportunity to plant a church or to be a part of a church in its early years is you get to be a part of that culture that's being built. You get to take some of those wins. They're, they're just ever so personal. You know, it feels mm-hmm. a little bit like an extension of your family when you invest that much time, your heart, your energy into the church. But every strength has a backsided weakness. So the strength of that is also the challenge of that. Like when mm-hmm. the church is hurting, it impacts you. When, when yeah. you're going through challenges, it impacts you. Sure. You didn't just show up and read the job description and sign on the dotted line and you, you work there. Um, you were part of helping see that church birthed and come to life and see it move from crawling to walking to growing. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know that there's any way to divorce your own heart and emotions mm-hmm. from what goes on in the church. And so I think that in and of itself has so many wonderful moments of, wow, this is a win. Mm-hmm. And then moments of, oh, I, I feel that loss. I mean, we've all walked through it. You don't you don't own people. The people belong to Jesus, but right. that group that maybe you start with are not always yeah. the individuals that are the same that you grow with. And yeah. when you walk through those transitions, uh, unless you've walked through it, 
I don't, it's hard to know what that feels like to, to walk yeah. through some of those transitions. And uh, God grows us all through that, but I would say um, it's not lost on any of us. We all navigate that as someone who's been a part of a church in its early stages and uh, just experiencing some of those fun first wins and then some of those hardships that come with it. Um, so I think to answer your question, I think it's just it becomes an extension of who you are. You don't own the church. You want to do your best not to have your fingerprints on it. It belongs to Jesus. But um, we're, you know, the lead pastor, the planter, just has an integral part to the culture, the heartbeat, the, the vibe of that fellowship. And that comes with its strengths and weaknesses, its wins and its losses, its challenges and its drawbacks. But yeah. I, I don't think you'd want it any other way. I mean, if your heart's not in it, then, right. then where yeah. are you? But um, those are some of the things I would say. I can remember, you know, I think one of the things you said about the, when, the, when you first plant a church, it, it obviously reflects the personality yep. of the pastor. I was very engrossed in surfing, obviously, when I first, my brother's a pro surfer, I grew up here. And so everybody used to call this the surfer's church. Right. <laughs> And and but I was into it. I mean, I and I did surf outreaches. I had a skate park. You know, we that we were known for that kind yeah. of, and that reflected me. But you know, also I think when when you start, I remember I remember our church's first funeral. Mm. You know, it was like a young thirty mm. year old guy died. He was a good friend of mine, and the whole church, you know, was just grieving mm -hmm. over it. And now someone a funeral's going on. Half the people don't. Oh, we don't know who that is, and right. and and I would hire staff people, start adding staff, and you know they'd be over certain areas of ministry, and then I'd find out some couple left or something, and ask the staff guy, I'd go, wow, you know, why did they leave? And they go, oh, I don't know, and, and you took it very personally, like, oh my gosh, I, those people have been with us for, but they were like, they didn't have that longevity of connection, or maybe mm -hmm. even the amount of investment in them that you felt, because you felt everything that happened. And someone told me this, and I believe this is true, that probably the first five years of planting a church and pastoring a church is more about the Lord forming and fashioning you mm -hmm. and your character and your mm -hmm. calling than it is anything about the church itself. God is teaching you how to be a leader, how to hear his voice, how to love people, mm -hmm. and how to invest in your community. And he's really, I mean, even though he's building the church, it's kind of like, you know, Moses taking these people on. God was working on Moses maybe mm. more than he was the people. What do you, what do you think about that? I maybe? agree 100%. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's brought up every little imperfection. And sure. It's been like put in, being put in a pressure cooker. Right. right. And even the, the relationships. Sure. You know, yeah. the, you know, I think that's been a big challenge mm -hmm. for being in a community, planning with people that you were friends with first, yeah. Yeah. and then when they leave, you know, it's like, it hurts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, someone told me once, I may have heard this from a professor or something, he said, uh, every leader or every pastor is like a tin can sitting on a picket fence post, and some people just come to pick up a rock, see if they can knock it off. <laughs> you know, you're up there. Let's let, let's see what, what he's made of, or let's see how he responds to this. And and sometimes you do have people who just um, I don't know. Seems like they're they're there sometimes just to test you. Yeah. <laughs> but I think you know, with that dynamic of being a church planner, I would have had a hard time understanding what it's like to be truly married until after I was married. Oh, yeah. And like when starting to have children, you know, kind of how you mentioned the pressure cooker dynamic, how to explain that to someone, you know, well, this is what it'll be like to be a dad and then to be a dad of three and then to be a dad of six. Like until you walk through that, it, it's hard to be able to, to give perspective to that and really be able to understand what that's like until you're in that seat. Sure. And so I think some of those dynamics just come with it to your point about God's working on you as you're in it. Um, there's so many dynamics to it that you're learning as you're doing, and, yeah. and that's okay. That's what you're meant to be doing. And um, sometimes the fellowship of uh, walking with people that have gone through that. Oh, we'll stop it. Right. Time to yeah. go. <laughs> you gotta leave. With Nathan Pooley. <laughs> so yeah, Nathan and I were talking earlier about that kind of stuff, and, and I've got to step out for I'm gonna leave it with you guys. But um, I said, you know, when you bring people on staff and I believe, at least this has worked best for me, if you bring them on from within, they feel part of that family, they feel loyalty to the church, they love the people. And I said, one thing I always try to tell them before we bring them on is, you know, 
the difference between coming to our church and working at our church is like the difference between dating a woman and marrying a woman. You know, you date her, she comes out, she's all dressed up, she's got perfume on, she looks great. You drop her off, you had a great time. But if you marry her, you see everything. You know, you see the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's, that's how it is with the church. You know, you you start working there and you see all the dynamics, all the yeah. different things that go on. You don't just come through the door on Sunday and, you know, worship and see the pastor and, and that's it. Not that that's bad, but there is a big difference between uh, getting into the ministry and seeing everything that goes on versus just being a someone who attends. And sure. I think we've all yeah. been on both sides of that fence. So mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it with you guys. Uh, church planting is a roller coaster ride, but you know what? It's it's something you're called to. It's not something you choose usually. Thanks, Nathan. Good Thank to see you. Thank you, Pastor John. <laughs> yeah. So you good? Good. Well, I mean, what, I, what are we going to do now? I don't know. <laughs> well, we were talking about church planting. Let, yeah. Let me just, I'd love to just hear more about your story. I mean, I know you grew up here, and we've had a chance to grab, you know, Thai noodles or something mm -hmm. over the years, and you've you shared a little bit about. Um, I think even your connection to our family, like through my uncle Yancey Sterling. But yeah. how did you come to know the Lord? Like, how did all that? I mean, you don't want to be a a pastor before you're a Christian. So, I mean, you don't want to be a church planner before you oh, yeah. know and love Jesus. So, like, how did all that happen for you? That's a great, great question. Um, you know, so I was raised Catholic, so I had a little bit of that in background. But yeah. um, it, I really never was able to identify with it very mm. well, and I, I so it didn't wasn't a huge impact, you know, for me and, and uh kinda went on a tangent in high school. Mm -hmm. Like went hard the other direction. Um, you know, uh, the the church I was going to just it was my family kinda got out of church and so we stopped mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Doyle actually okay. put on an event at the singer. Okay. And he brought C J Hobgood here. Yeah, I remember that event. Won, yeah. He had just won the W S L or mm -hmm. it was a Maybe it was the WCT then. Mm -hmm. So he was the best surfer in the world, mm -hmm. and I, I heard about it, and I was like, I'm gonna go to that, you know. Yeah. And I went to that, and you know, got to see CJ and Mike got up and preached, and you know, gave a, um, a chance to respond that I didn't do. <laughs> you know, I don't remember what it was, but I didn't do it. And then they're like, if you wanted to respond, raise your hand, and we'll bring you a, a book. And um, I got a the Surfer's Bible, which it was oh, the yeah. Book of John. Okay. And that was like the beginning of this, like the first seed yeah. that planted, and I believe that was in November. Okay. Um, uh, Lord, that was it was a while ago. I don't even yeah. try to give the year. Early two thousands, probably. Yeah. yeah, it took a couple of months, and then I, and then then um, that's when I kind of really had had some some things happen that really had you know I turned to faith, and I, the only folks in my family that I knew went to church were my were my cousin. Okay. And so I called him up and was like, Hey, I. I need to change, you know. I need to turn over a new leaf. Um, and they were going to Pace Assembly of God. Okay. At the time, and so he came and picked me up. It was a Saturday night. I stayed with them and went to church on that Sunday morning and had a pretty pretty radical encounter there. Mm. And and just that that was kind of the beginning of of a real relationship mm. with, with God for me. Did you know Caitlin at that time, your wife, or did no. you meet later? Or? No, okay. she was she was singing. So oh, she, she was, was at that church? She was at the church okay. on the stage singing. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So how did you guys connect? Like years after or soon after? It was or? about seven or eight months. Okay. And then, you know, um, I was kind of a, like I literally had washed up on the on the front de steps of yeah. the church. Like I with long hair, eyebrow ring, very different background from everyone in that church. It was, were suit and ties. Mm. Like it was very traditional and um, it was, it but they embraced me and took me in. And so as my life kind of started to change and um, some family actually connected us. So it's like, mm. there's this girl in the church, you know, and my, my cousin was like, y'all you, you, should go on a date. And we went, I will never forget, we went to Village Inn <laughs> in Pace <laughs> yeah. on a Sunday night after Sunday night service. And I, it just, that's kind of was the beginning of it. That was the start it. of it. Yeah. How long have you guys been married now? 13 years. 13 years. That's awesome. Little boy years. named Asa. Little boy, Asa. He's six. Six, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wild man. Wild Awesome man. hair. Yeah. Mowgli. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Mowgli. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good description. Yeah. That's cool, man. That's awesome. So, like, you get saved. I mean, now you're, you know, church planner, pastor on the beach. I mean, wh what happened in between there? Like, how did you, 
how'd you get interested in ministry or how did all that begin for you? Yes, yeah, that's, that's another really good question. Um, I, I, I felt like I don't, I don't, I don't feel like I hear from the Lord a lot, mm. but I definitely felt like I, I heard from God early on in the first couple months, mm. and it was to, 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 I was supposed to, to preach. Yeah, and I didn't even know what the term meant completely, and, um, and, and so that got my mind spinning, and, and then, Pace Assembly that that year that I started going there, they started an intern program, mm. and so you could uh, work at the church three days a week, and they would pay for your schooling. To, okay. to go through seminary with the assemblies. Okay, and, uh, cool. So that's what I did. I went, I did that during the day, and then I, I got a part-time job at Pepsi okay. at night. Okay. And that was, um, you know, finished that up. It was about a year and a half, two years, and I never really went into ministry full-time. I just, I went full-time at Pepsi. Yeah. And did ministry on the side for yeah. about a decade. Okay. Never went full time into ministry, um, and just kind of stayed connected to the church there in Pace. Yeah, did some stuff there with the youth, and then uh, did like took a job as a kind of part time youth pastor in Navarre, helped with a church plant in Fort Walton, hmm. um, and just kind of just went just wherever I felt like I was. You know, where really anybody who would invite me, honestly, because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a lot of opportunities. But Pepsi gave me a lot of opportunities because hmm. I, you know, I moving into different roles there that have helped me with church planning, you know, okay. doing safety meetings with like 200 employees, like mm. getting up and talking in front of people there, um, was, was really helpful yeah. to, to kind of get ready for, you know, I feel like church, the church yeah. planning and the business side of it. Like, yeah. Just kind of being able to grow in leadership skills and just interaction with people and how to kind of move from point A to point B and those kinds of things. Yeah, totally. Teams like building teams and mm. um, budgets which mm. I had really not, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of history with that. And, and mm. in the seminary training, that was not in it. Right. It was theology, pastoral care. There was not like, how do you build a budget? How do you right. like organize a team? Yeah. So that, that most of that training, I feel like I got at Pepsi. Yeah, that's a neat blend because you have to have both. I mean, you have to be able to, you know, lead a congregation biblically, but also practically. And yeah. so to, to just lean in one way or the other seems to land in a place that's ineffective. So it's neat that the Lord kind of did both and very organically, you know? Yeah. You didn't have to like have some master plan to get yourself to be a church planner. God just, as he called you, he empowered and equipped you to yeah, do what he was doing. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's cool. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, it was never really something I that I wanted to do. Right. You know, it was just, um, it just kind of, as we were taking steps, it just kind of came into to view. Yeah, I mean, my story's similar. I mean, I grew up in a really good home. I mean, my dad's a... Uh, you know, as we heard, came to know the Lord late in his teens and then um, planted the church that we're doing this recording in. And so I grew up in a home where mom and dad loved each other. We were part of a church that was founded on the Bible, taught the Bible, good group of people, good impact in community. But I never really saw myself as a church planter or a pastor. But after um, just really coming to know the Lord personally, growing in his word and having an opportunity to live on the West Coast, for a few years and kind of identify my own calling, you know, living in this town. Um, I mean this in the most respectful and in and, and the positive way as possible, but you could say there's some shadows here. I mean, my uncle has a, a statue on the beach that like literally casts a physical shadow, but my uncle yeah. being a, a well-known surfer in the community and my father planning a real healthy church in a really small town, um, it's kind of hard to discern, well, what am I supposed to do? Who am I? So the opportunity to, to live on the West Coast for four or five years and and to really learn that, now that's calling that God's put on my life. Um, but then just faithful wherever he places you. And then he leads, he guides, he directs, he empowers. And more just through life's circumstances and opportunities, you just be faithful where you are. And then, okay, I guess I'm church planning right now. Not Nothing I saw myself doing, but that's where God has me. And I uh, yeah. feel like he's in it, so I'll be faithful to it, you know? And I, I don't think, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't think you ever graduate from that. You just keep following the Lord yeah. in the season that he's placed you in and, and trust him. And you don't have to always have the 20, 10, five-year plan of clarity of how mm -hmm. everything's going to come together. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles, yeah. you know? So just be faithful right where you are. Yeah. But that's that's kind of been my story as well. Even though we kind of come at it from two different backgrounds, it's still got that similar vein of truth to it. But well, that's cool. Um, 
so Upper Room Church, located at the Beach Church on Pensacola Beach, where you guys meet now, 11 a.m. on Sundays? 11 a.m. Yep. And what kind of stuff's going on in the life of the church now? And it's like VBS week? VBS happening now. Um, had a team come back from El Salvador this week. Oh, cool. So we, we like to go down there. And, right on. Um, coming up, you know, just like summertime is, it's you know, it's a little transient. You know, right. A lot of tourists. And so, uh, you know, we kind of try to bring in more guest speakers i think y'all do that yeah and take take some time off and um but we're you know i think for me personally like you just said like it's when we when i first planted the church i felt like i needed to have like a 20-year plan right like our 10-year plan or five-year plan and 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 when 2020 hit it just like completely changed everything Mm. and um it's been a really it's been hard but like really freeing to just let god do the work Mm. you know like you know, live in day tight compartments. Right. Just focus on the present, what's in front of me, loving people and walking with God and um and you, you use the illustration of your kids and I mm. think it's I think that's the the most beautiful, brilliant illustration mm-hmm. of a church. It, you know, it's like I as much as I would like for my son to do certain things and look a certain way mm. or like like to serve or not like to serve, he, he's not you know, I'm I'm stewarding his growth. Right. I'm just like to keep him safe and keep him well fed. Right. And so that's, you know, my heart as a as a planner now, and I mean, I guess pastoring is to do those two things. Right. And and where we go in five years or ten years, like, I mean, I I've got like some dreams in my heart I'd love to see happen, but mm. at the end of the day, it's like it really is. It's up to the Lord. It's up to the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to be as faithful as I can, and yep. um, I think. I think your dad said it, but, you know, really, like, loving your family well, you know, focusing on, like, the this, this real small circle, mm-hmm. and, and outside of that, everything else is kind of periphery. Right. And and because and, it does, it does, it tries to become your identity. Yeah. And, like, yeah. take over everything. Absolutely. And I think, like, the time we're living in, I don't know if it's post-COVID or what it is, but I think we just keep seeing more and more how character over capability is ever so needed and important in what we do like we've just seen it seems like every month you hear of a different dynamic with a different ministry or a different leader um where there's some character challenges and so the thing that i love about the lord is it's god the father god the son god the holy spirit not god the ceo god the cfo Mm. you know these are familial languaging or language terms and so for us as we're christians we're we're husbands we're fathers and out of who we are as, as human beings and our character is what you know kind of overflows into the health of that ministry. Uh, there's a, an author by the name of Carrie Newoff that once said, competency may get you into the room, but character is what keeps you there. Mm. And so I don't think we want to negate capability to do what we do. I mean, training like you were talking about both in the business world and taking those classes, yeah, that's a prerequisite. It's it's good to be trained. Yeah. But I think at the end of the day, um, who we are, you know, how we love our families, how we love people, yeah, um, how we care for our local community, and how we just steward the church. We don't we don't own it. Yep. Um, it belongs to Jesus, yeah. and um, we just seek to do the best we can to shepherd, love, care, serve, and uh, lead by example, and trust Him with the fruit. You Amen. know, um, that's that's the the beauty of being a part of a, of a church that belongs to Jesus. Um, but yeah, well, thanks for your time today. Yeah. Um, need to hear a little bit about your story, about the church there on the beach, and um, we're excited to see all that the Lord does. Thanks, yep. Pastor Neil. I appreciate it, dude. Is that it, Ryan?